A Hustler's Guide to the Fast Lane, by Michael Gray. Hi guys. This is going to be of considerable length but well worth it for many. After reading on this forum, reading and especially Ryan's killer topic A Hustler's Guide to Buying and Selling Everything, I started out likewise six months ago with $1,250 to my name. To prove that hustling can be fast lane. Scale it. Dot. This thread will document my journey, ask me anything you want. Dot. I bought all kinds of electronics below market value and flipped them on Craigslist. Started focusing on particular high end devices that sell well. Contacted wholesalers, kept flipping the products on CL to mark up. Much less hassle than buying separately from private individuals. Dot. Currently, six months later, buying $18,000 worth of stock weekly. Sell at 15 to 35 percent margin. Last week's net profit was three thousand dollars. Invest everything back into it. Next week will be a dollar 20k plus order with around three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars net profit. Got a wholesaler sales rep who's willing and able to take me to dollar 150,000 plus orders all week. At which point I'd profit $30,000 or week. Started putting ads up in a different city, allocating one day per week to bundle all deals in that city. I spend 15 to 20 hours or week on this, but honestly don't count the hours. I'm currently making a pre tax profit of $10,000 or month with no signs of slowing down. Good money and I'm grateful for it every day, but I'm hungry and nothing is enough till I'm free. Also, it's not fast lane yet needs scale and time. I'm 21 years old and I want to be worth $500,000 15 months from now. At a $25,000 profit per month, the business would have made $375,000 profit in 15 months, and it should be worth $300k plus on its own. That's $700,000 before taxes. 1. I will put up CL ads in all the big cities in a 100 miles radius to make sure stock keeps selling fast. Realizing this ISNT a sellable business, I need to open retail locations. Two, open a high street retail location. If it goes well, hire and train an employee or two. Keep selling on CL, I have nothing to lose. Three, work on the business instead of in it. Divorce it from my time. Open more retail locations. Reinvest everything. Ultimately, sell it all. Long ass post, but may this become an inspiring journey and a thread filled with golden nuggets. I consider myself a beginner, but ask me anything you want to know. Any guys here who experienced success with a retail location? What are the pitfalls? Any pointers on how to open one? All the best. Michael. Your spacing made a seemingly long post easy to read, can't tell you how annoying it is to read a giant wall of text that lacks paragraphs. First off, congrats. You went from under 2000 to your name and are now rolling in the money at a substantial linear rate. That is nothing to scoff at, so take a moment to bait yourself on the back for coming this far. Welcome to the forum. Two questions I have for you How did you find a wholesale supplier? What electronics are you selling? I'm currently 17, but a little over a year ago my buddy and I got together and wanted to start a resale business for electronics, Apple products, droids, Xbox 360s, etc. And we went through probably 20 plus suppliers from wholesale websites and despite official licenses they all ended up to be fakes. Glad to have you here. And I will definitely keep up to date with this thread. Thank you, I'd been reading here for a few months but frankly wouldn't post before I had done something. No disclosures before I made it. It's not important anyway. It could be done with any high demand product. Second question, I'll walk you through in detail. Go to Aleks Press. In short, don't buy fake.
you'll be fine eventually. I'd rather spend $150 on pastries than on fines. Don't buy chargers that don't meet your country's safety regulations. Don't buy third party batteries or chargers. You don't want a charger to burn up in someone else's house or your own. Enough said. I'm going to save your time and money right here. These two pieces of advice used properly is 90% of the game. Colon one. Don't waste your life buying selling in the same market. An analogy, when you visit a farmer's market, would you buy flowers at $1 at one stand, then set up your own boot a bit farther to sell them at $1.20? Yes, your sales skills and marketing might work. Use those skills, but buy wholesale at $0.65.2. Don't look too far for wholesalers of premium products aka Microsoft Xbox, Sony PlayStation. I'm going to let you think first, then give the answer. Where? I'm not native in English, but I'll try my best to elaborate if you so desire. Michael. Golden ideas for you colon dollar forty now greater than sixty five dollars tomorrow we? A most people are unreliable at best, don't put deals off. B $40 invested in new stock can yield another $40 tomorrow equals greater than this alone is worth a. In like flint, I was thinking the same thing while I was reading this. Very easy on the eyes. Well done Michael. I would wonder why you need a retail location. If this is only so you can sell your business further down the line I would say this may not be a good enough reason to go B plus M retail. Depending on what you are selling, it may be better suited to sell on the internet as opposed to a B plus M retail shop. The negatives would be the added cost of the business lease, the cost of employees, the cost of benefits, equipment, theft, the loss of time training and monitoring your employees, etc. All of these things are the cost associated with them in terms of eating away at your profit margins as well as taking away your time to expand the business. I have two questions colon one what sales channels do you use? Are you solely selling through CL? Or are you doing eBay 2 question mark 2 how broad is your niche? Are you selling just a few products in a targeted niche or do you sell many different niches at the same time? Niches smartphones, GPS, tablets, laptops. I sell only the four top sellers so far because I work with limited capital and want to make the most out of it. There's room for more, though. I just listen to my customers. Most people want to try out the device in person and ask questions before they hand over the cash. I guess in the US, people are okay shopping online and spending $300 to $400 before they receive anything. But I people's mental limit here is like $150.B plus M retail equals equals higher sales volume. I make good money listing as a private person on CL, though most people react more people should know about this when I explain it all during a transaction. I'm not known by more than 200 people ATM. Imagine if 3.000.000 people knew about our business. Which is a reality if I have 8 to 12 stores. Nobody's doing the same in my country. I can how retail operations selling new smartphones and tablets would buy up the business. If not, it should cash flow a lot. I would pay employees a low base salary, but generous commissions kind of makes us both happy. One I sell CL only, the alternative in my country, but it's entirely similar. No eBay equals less profit x more time to sell stock two things we all hate have a neat website that's informational. Made a few sales on there, but that's been mostly through friends of customers and word of mouth. Still, they prefer pickup. I also do hand out business cards when I make a sale and ask. They're surprised at first. But then I tell them they get $25 cash back within 14 days if they refer a friend to us. After all, many people are looking for the product that we sell, at a reasonable price. Some customers have even started to buy my product in bulk at a discount, and sell it on to friends and family. 
handed out 50 cards in the past two weeks or so, these made me an extra $1,000 in profit. Speed plus given so you re not parked any more kudos for your actions in this amazing thread. Next tip business credit line greater than credit card business credit line not a straight loan allows you to go negative on your checkings account. You pay interest on the amount you went under 0x days you did it. Dot you don't have to pay it back every month less than, greater than credit card you pay 10% interest less than, greater than credit card 20% work with your own hard earned cash first, document everything have an accountant help with this, then talk to your bank. I'd like to share everything I've learned so far, but here are a couple of questions I'd like to ask the community. This is difficult. You want to be the of your operation, because if you teach the whole process to someone else, you violate the commandment of entry. Still, you need your time to work on your business instead of in it after initial experience. My thought, I source and buy stock, I advertise, I make the phone calls, someone else assists the buyer while he comes over and pays. That someone takes a commission per sale. You don't pay him by the hour, so negative cash flow is impossible. Other ideas. How would you divorce it from your time? Hmm. Not sure if this can be done with physical products. But, an information product like an ebook would be divorced from your time once you write it. I'm still waiting for the answer. XD it is almost impossible for me to find a legit cell phone, video games, etc. Wholesaler, no fake. I second this, near impossible to find legitimate dealers for high-end products. I love your quest. I own a B&M retail store. I would strongly recommend you not go that route with this business. The costs are very high and the benefit is very small for the type of business you currently have. I won't discourage you, but you will learn as you go and likely end up changing course in several ways and recognizing that your projected hashes don't mean anything. That's okay. Focus on the path and providing the most value you can and the end will work itself out. A brick and mortar that is operated by employees, but managed by you shouldn't be underestimated divorces you partly from each sale that's made. I'm trying to think in this direction. How can I, with a physical product, distribute more? I've also been thinking about selling online, but these types of electronics dollar 300 plus require a decade long golden reputation before people around here would trust them. On the other hand, I could contact daily deal websites to get rid of this surplus stock and set up an agreement. This you should contact sites like Keybids or something similar and offer to sell them your products at a slight very slight discounted price and offer a bigger discount when they buy larger orders. They go through auctions daily so I'm sure they need stock. Just typing this out made me wonder where they get their current stock. Anyone have any ideas? I wonder if they would tell someone who asked. Come on guys, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. It's probably right in front of your nose multiple times a week. Think this way, a consumer does not type in by retail FIFA 2012 in Google. Instead, he visits websites he knows he can find used stuff bomb. Checked it out. We don't have it over here. But we have Quibids seems to be big. With such a warehouse, and even their own wholesale service may be a source to buy from. It's probably better to buy from them than to sell to them. My guess. A consumer buybacks a tilde la cash for your old games or phone or the retail customer returns that cannot be sold as new anymore in stores. I'm going to send out some emails to these sites to see if they give up any information. I'll keep you updated. In response to your reply earlier, if you are insinuating Craigslist or eBay, then that is great, but the prices are pretty exorbitant and they are nowhere near wholesale suppliers. It would be one product at a time, at a minimal discount. Thanks a lot for the insightful response. Maybe it's just me. But I am very uncomfortable with overhead retail location and fixed costs. Like, I would rather pay people on commission only instead of paying them a wage. It just feels like pressure. Anyway, 
I'll get as uncomfortable as needed to make my dreams happen. About my projected hash s, I know. I feel good if I keep breaking last week's sales. Only thing that matters now is provide great service to my customers, keep my head down and get up to $20,000 profit or month before August. The main reason I contemplate selling B&M retail equals to increase my sales. I haven't reached a ceiling selling on CL yet, but when I do, I want a system that allows me to move more stock faster. Your progress so far is encouraging, well done. I'm 22 and I'm kicking myself in the butt for not taking the initiative to do something earlier. You're selling tech items, that's something extremely difficult to sell in my country as the competition is ridiculously high. My questions. How did you find a supplier or s so quick with limited capital in the beginning? Are you selling in large quantities or are you making a decent profit of each product sold in lower quantities? Why are customers purchasing from you instead of eBay where they can potentially find the same product for same or cheaper or similar price as well as of payment security? Are you selling brand new items or second hand? I'm in Australia so our markets are different on what's in demand I guess. Thanks. Ryan made $70,000 buying and or off from on Craigslist and reselling them on follow his way of finding deals and you'll get there too. eBay is similar, all the products sell for their market price. eBay is great to research prices though. I hear it all the time, I put it online for $30 since think it's worth that amount. Well, guess what? One tip though your $70,000 will depend on, 75% of you finding a good deal 25% of taking great pictures and writing compelling descriptions. Write as a private seller, act likewise on the phone. Especially in the beginning, people won't be offended at all if they find out you're a business. They love to hear they can always reach you in case they ever incur problems with their product. Oh, and another one buying on eBay, is a great automated bidding tool. Find deals, set your price, go. If you're strict about prices, you'll win 5% of the auctions. 22 is young. Come on, you'll be working with $50,000 in no time. I guess is this correct? Asia is prominent over there. What's people's opinion on Chinese goods? If I were you, sell brand items in used but great looking condition. I do the same. People don't care about a $2 or $5 iPhone accessory, unless they buy on eBay. eBay is overtaken by the Chinese when it comes to products up till $15. It's pretty straightforward for a Chinese seller to appear Australian, even on a website with strict rules such as eBay. They can look like mom and pop stores selling from the Gold Coast, while they are packing up phone cases in foggy Hong Kong. I didn't. Took my $1,250 from stocking shelves at the supermarket and looked on eBay or CL. I bought individual items, it took me three months to get to $5,000. Contacted wholesale companies, bought $3,500 worth of stock. Limit your risk by exercising due diligence. Have done business with three wholesalers. Now stick with only one. Since my margin is plus minus 20% and I reorder weekly, 3,500 became 5,000 orders, then 6,500, 7,600. I sell one unit at a time 99% of the time. I give people better prices if they are looking for two or if they bought from me in the past. There are two customers who've bought 10 items at a time at $50 profit, multiple times. I give them a serious discount as I have nothing to lose. Greater than C. Ryan's barter tricks. He who names a price first, loses never name a price first if the guy wants a better price than advertised. They want to meet up in person and hand over money only after having seen or tested the product. Yeah. But still, people buy stuff all the time. Find out what they need or want, and go from there. Don't buy snowmobiles if you like them or can get them at a good price, but because they want or need them. How's life in Australia by the way? Where are you based?
you're right about the Chinese sellers, they have flooded the eBay market for the small tech goods and accessories at the $15 range. They basically control it. Nice. I feel as though the whole meeting up process is downtime though, or snowmobiles in Australia haha, that's like trying to sell a heater in the desert Australia is great. Honestly a beautiful country with limitless opportunities. I'm in Sydney, NSW. Very populated city. Thanks for your response, I'll have more questions for sure, soon. So if I understand this correctly, you're selling and moving around $18,000 worth of stock a week. What is the average base price you sell each product for? You also say you want to get up to $150 million a week. Maybe I'm missing something here but I don't see how anyone could sell $150 million worth of electronics a week on CL. The time spent alone delivering each product seems like too much of a hassle. Why wouldn't you go with eBay? You'll get slightly less profit, but you'll save a lot more time delivering products and dealing with no-shows or customer problems. Not to mention, correct me if I am wrong, the op said he sells one item at a time to prevent multiple listings or confusion. Maybe we are missing something, because that would equal more than 24 hours a day worth of work. I was just trying to get the point across with the snowmobiles. Can you ski out there anyway? I honestly spent some time researching great places to live in the world, politically, economically and happiness index-wise speaking, it was always Australia and Norway who came out on top. I studied in Norway for a semester and was nothing short of amazing. Still, I would love to spend a year or so in Australia to feel it out as well. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. The meeting up thing is not bad. It's one of the primary reasons people choose me to fulfill their needs. At least they get to try and see the product before they commit to a sale. Your mileage may vary. It'll give you people and sales skills, don't underestimate this. I wouldn't be so sure that a retail location will increase your sales. You have to consider the market. If I'm buying used electronics, I'm either going to buy it from an established retailer for convenience or peace of mind, or CL for price. The market you are serving on CL may well not want to buy from a retail establishment, where they will assume the prices are jacked up. Correct, $18,000 is about this week's stock. I trade in Earth though, so it looks much less if you see it from that point of view, maybe it's just mentally. I challenge myself and make it a game to sell all the stock within 7 days, then reinvest everything back into it. On the issue of running around to close deals, I don't. I let people come to my house. Noticed this in Ryan's thread as well, maybe in the US or Canada people are wary of this because of all the horror stories in the media. I've tried public meetups, but to me and the buyer it just looks like you're selling stolen electronics. Why not eBay? I've sold on there before. Slightly less profit is an understatement. My average sale price is $300 with $50 profit. After PayPal and eBay fees I probably keep only $10, with the chance of a PayPal dispute that ends in the buyer's favor and me losing $300. I have around 5% no-shows, that's not an issue. Customer problems? I give them a replacement, no questions asked. I got a repair guy who's more talented than I'll ever be fixes up everything for pennies on the dollar. He's a private person so he can't invoice me, I pay him in stock. Naggy customers? I'll happily take it if I know I can fill their needs. I do want to get up to $150,000 a week, but to be able to sell more stock, I move 70 miles away and rent office space for two hours in a youth hostel once or two x weekly, to have people from that area visit me. I make sure I get at least 10 to 15 people coming over so it's worth my time. I can repeat this with four other locations. I figure I'll start having problems moving stock starting at $30 to $50,000 weekly. That's partly the point of this thread. How can I turn it into something bigger? Divorce it partly from my time by having salespeople work on commission? 
opening a retail location to sell more and increase the business visibility and value? Make deals with experienced online retailers and sell wholesale to them or retail indirectly to their customers? Other options? See above plus the following I use the equivalent of CL in my country we do have CL, but few people use it. I use multiple accounts with different photos. When I buy stock, it's usually something in the lines of colon 25x, 15x. Every person who calls and offers 90 to 100% of the asking price, gets it. You basically try to undiversify and focus on the most productive stock, and sell that over and over and over. Since my prices are at market average, many people think my price is great for a used but still great looking device. Yay! It might be a viable option though. You could market it as a store that sells new as well as ex-showroom models in a Marzing condition at a 30% discount with full warranty. Because that's where my prices are, it's a genuine possibility. Naturally, accessories and a repair service should be offered as well, but these are secondary. At first, I could manage the store on my own. When it does well, train an employee and open a second location. Rinse and repeat. That's the reason I think about retail B and M. Visibility more sales, hardly anybody knows my business now plus business value. I don't see how I can sell a dorm room CL hustle to a multi million dollar competitor. What is with you and physical products? Of course, it can be done with physical product. You can outsource and automate anything. Now, whether you should is a different matter. But obviously it can be done. So if information products are the panacea, can you show us your latest offering and tell us how well it's doing? Gracias, I've done buying and selling electronics on CL and online mostly smartphones and laptops. I've never got into huge quantities though. I would assume it's difficult unless you find a good supplier, which you have. So I definitely applaud you for being to do it. When investing into suppliers in the beginning, how do you avoid getting scammed or rather, having your money or information stolen? I guess the latter is my biggest fear when dealing with overseas sales because of the horror stories. I've never used escrow or anything of the sort. I've only used PayPal for online sales. Congratulations op. I'm 21 as well and have just recently started my life in the fast lane. Where do you see yourself about 3-4 years from now? Do your due diligence. Have a positive critical attitude towards the business. How does their website look? Do they have physical locations you could visit? Even if you can't because you are on the other side of the world, it's important. Ask this when you call them, too. Can you visit them? How long have they been in business? Credentials? How many employees? Then ask for a test order of a couple of units. PayPal is great for overseas business. Oh, and instead of asking for a purchase minimum, ask for their upper limit. We're not here to dream small, are we? Hey Michael the first took your advice about not looking too far for wholesalers of premium products. I made a few phone calls to some companies to see if they're willing to unload their surplus stock to me. None of them were willing to offer their surplus stock unless it was a pallet of broken products. Tablets with cracked screens, video game consoles in terrible condition, etc. Any ideas going forward? Best of luck, where are you based in the US? And what are you doing exactly? Question mark three to four years from now. Impossible to predict, ideally, 10 B&M stores, $100,000 or month. Set up more in a neighboring country. Make it hands off, set enough personal money aside, use it as an ATM or sell it. Dot. But then again, when I have 1 to 3 stores making $20,000 total x 15 months and someone would offer $300,000 plus, I wouldn't hesitate. Unless I see much more growth potential. Honestly, $500,000 to $750,000 would do it for me. I'd be able to live slow, enjoy life, and travel around with that black 67 Mustang fastback I've always dreamt of having, among other things. I'd be able to pursue photography and not give a damn about the income. 
same thing with organizing local parties or events. I wouldn't lose sleep over profitability, of course it matters, but 500k in the bank can make one think things through slowly. You know what would make me feel great? Have a successful business 20k or m hands off here about 10 months from now, come over to the US and do the same thing there. Starting with little to show it can be done. Taking everyone aboard who's got the passion and drive. Act big when you call them. We're already working with a few suppliers, but we've basically outgrown them and are constantly looking for more xxxxx. Just read your blog post, nice seeing you taking action. Keep going. Talk to thrift shops, buy larger and larger amounts from them. Get to the source. Where are thrift shops getting their stuff from? Individuals, yes, but also clothing stores. Get in, dig deeper. Optimistic approach. It sounds like a nice plan. I would keep it going and who knows how much you can make this grow. It all depends on you. Money is nice but the drive to succeed in your business, expand, and reach higher can be just as nice, while still allowing time for photography and travel. You seem level-headed and I wish you luck. I'm in the NYC area and in the electronic dance music industry. Starting a major record label and event company. We launch US wide in two months with never before attempted talent and an uncontested market space. Thinking about doing something like this myself so I'm watching threads like this one. Great work meeting your goals so far keep it up. You said you only sell the real products. How did you find real products on Alibaba? Are you talking Sony or Samsung real, or just high-end off-brand Chinese products? When going the importing route branding your products is important in order to compete. Is Sony the first brand that comes to mind when you ask yourself what people buy a lot? Focus on what people want, then go source it. Never buy branded products over Alibaba. I'd love to be proved wrong on this one, but it's all fake. The Louis Vuitton, the HTC, the Omega Speed Masters, everything. You said you sell electronics. Hence my brand reference to Sony. Out of curiosity, did you get actual invoices of what would be on the pallets? I am very interested, and think it may be worth it to find an employee to repair these items, to then resell. Good job with your business. From what I read, we're from the same region the Netherlands or Belgium. I would like to have your thoughts on something in Belgium. People still have issues buying online. They are not entirely trusting established websites and only a small percentage of the population relies on online marketplaces where you and I can operate. Kpazu is an example. What's your view on this? Selling unbranded items like you do should be difficult, especially electronics. If we're talking about accessories, then okay. Yay yeah, I got some actual invoices. It crossed my mind to repair them for resale. Truthfully, I found them to be ridiculously expensive to the point where it would practically eliminate any profit to be made. Exactly. Why else would these companies unload the stock? Everything that can be repaired in-house, will be. Don't fall for that overpriced garbage. I'd say in general, never buy items from an established company as it's not worth it. A car dealership isn't going to unload surplus damaged Lamborghinis unless they can repair them cost effectively. Buy from private parties if you can. Sorry to be so blunt, but the herd usually doesn't have a clue about market value. Best of luck. No hard feelings. And yes, I do. However, think of it as. Reread the line above. It's one of the best insights about this type of business. It's the original hustler thread condensed. Step 2 is to then find it 20% or more under market value. Electronics, demand plus margin plus small budget needed. I don't sell unbranded. I buy unbranded accessories to go with it, but that's where it ends. You can't sell Chinese goods and give a warranty. You just can't, believe me, I've been there. The quality is nowhere. Which means warranty issues. 
safety issues, and no customer referrals. You. Hi guys, this will be an intermezzo, an update on all the important things I've learned since starting this thread. To me, this is solid gold. In an ideal world, I sell out all stock weekly. I then buy more, using the profits from last week, and three days later my order arrives. Rinse and repeat, no limits. However, opportunities are lost all the time. Colon defective items have to be repaired under warranty, lose all profit on that sale. Shipments arriving after the weekend when weekend equals selling time. Bank guy forgot to submit my credit line increase form. Just found this out 12 days later. New opportunities come along, just like that. Colon a few customers buy in bulk. After 5 months, $60 or sale sucks. Now it's at times $30 by 10 units, same time investment 15 minutes. A customer of mine woman, 40s now buys in bulk, 15 units at a time and growing. I make $1,000 US dollars per week off her. She has ambition to file for a business ID if it continues to go well. She's very customer oriented, much better with nagging people than I am. I might convince her to open her own store. Since she's not an employee as such, much less micromanagement than employees, don't have to deal with the minutiae of customer problems. Even little success is one hell of a bumpy road. There is no smooth sailing, never. Anyone experience desensitization to downs, but also ups? I seem to dot I thought $10,000 a month would be the dream. Now that I'm here, a $120,000 orange Lamborghini Glado Spider still seems so far off. I have zero patience. I hate having to wait, sit around. I'm restless in a negative way I think. As long as I'm not financially free. What do I do during downtime because I still don't have enough cash to buy all the stock I need weekly? I lift weights, and something that might help a lot of you. Here you go the guy is living a great, happy life, and is in my eyes immensely successful making perhaps a $150,000 annual net profit. He's been doing that for 10 years now, was patient and finally bought his dream car. Makes you appreciate how much $150,000 actually is. My impatience and restless got better by watching his videos. Look, I intend to reach the $125,000 in the bank mark by December. 31. I will feel genuinely confident and take a month long trip abroad. I don't want to burn out. Seriously? It's a pretty tough life. And this is coming from a guy who's about to deadlift nearly 400 pounds for reps tonight. $125,000 plus 100,000 euros will give me room to breathe and think what I really want to do business wise. Direct customer contact is boring and makes one insensitive to new people after a while. As said, I want something bigger. I want to go to the US in February and see if it's possible to do something similar, me being the teacher or wholesaler to stores or like-minded individuals who want to take this to the next level. I wouldn't even care about me taking only 25 to 30 percent of the profit margin. I know there are a lot of youngsters out there who have the dedication to build up success. Who knows where this could go? There are always alternatives out there, too. I love interior design and know what it can do with the value of a house. I know of an established business owner totally different industry than Re, who does this as a hobby with relatively inexpensive houses. He lets teenagers do 80% of the easy work as a summer job. Reading up on Re books, Fora, working together with him to learn the ropes, is something I see myself doing in a few years time, if not next year. It requires less day to day or should I say hour to hour running around to make a buck. This was long, and it helped me personally get to grips with a few thoughts of mine. You don't have to reply, and next time I'll keep it shorter. Taking IT to the fast lane. Idea, strategy and action bucko simplify it. There are two sides to analyze. The buying side if you look at it from a distance, 
one would say buying these things cannot be made fast lane other than buying from wholesalers. I currently buy my electronics from wholesalers, but honestly, many are a joke. The sales rep of the company I order from told me he could supply in excess of $150,000 worth of stock every week. It's hard to believe I'm just a small customer of theirs at this point in time. I feel like I'm making them too much easy money. Come on, they know if they find stock a little cheaper than they charge, I immediately jump on it and pay them. Their prices are the best around, but still, I feel like I want to get closer to the source and cut out the middlemen. My idea, a service that buys back electronics from the public, exists in many countries, but not here. I know that my wholesaler gets 70% of their stock this way. They buy back at $60 below the price they give me, while I make $65 on my side when retailing them. Imagine me buying directly from the public and making $60 plus $65 equals $125 or sale. Maybe I should build an online platform where people can get a price quote on their used smartphone or tablet or laptop, then they send it in. We pay them fast. Dealing with stolen items wouldn't be a problem as we can access the necessary legal databases to check up on serial numbers that are blacklisted. Would this work? One thing, I don't think people would accept the low prices we would give for their used stuff. If they put it on Facebook or CL here, they average my selling price. I know you guys have brighter minds than I have. Let your ideas flow. The selling side one dot build up more capital colon next to my current great looking used electronics. Often you condition used electronics in deluxe packaging at $50 extra. Double the margin. I already sell these wholesale to that woman mentioned above. Seems to be a demand for that as well. Some people want a good price, others an okay price but fabulous condition goods. Sell more wholesale slow summer months for retail at full margins too. Advertise mainly offline. Never done this. Options colon regional newspaper seems to work for local businesses here CLI list on my country's similar website, on which you can pay to have a preferred listing. Three. Improve website few people buy strictly online. Need incentives to make customers pull the trigger. Discount prices when people buy online? Don't want to commoditize and end up in a downward spiral. Have them pay after they receive the product. Not receiving an item spec. $300 ones is people's main concern. Safety check have them fill out a form plus upload copy of ID. Too much hassle for people? Safe for me? Or offer cash on delivery service? Margins allow that. Dot four. Open store when 500 units sold. Almost there. Looking at locations, rent prices, price of basic interior design, cost and process of setting up card payments. Dot ideally, have my wholesale customer open a store. Divorces it from my time, while she keeps buying more and more stuff. What's the Ryan thread you keep mentioning? Here you go. I'm on my way to making $100,000 by Christmas and working hard to push it towards $150,000. Considering I started the year with $1,250 and it took me at least four months before I was earning a regular salary, this business has potential. For the record, I am still packing and selling every device on my own. One future problem I may face is, my sales will stagnate given the small country I live in. I need to keep putting my capital to work, and there's only so much people needing A at any given moment. I can I expand to lower margin items. Be focus on area of expertise, but also wholesale and export. Medium long term February to June, I have plans to visit the US and start wholesaling used electronics to independent retailers and take Craigslist selling to the next level. The US would be great to scale things up. European countries next to mine are a pain in the ass because of the language differences. Anyone hustling right now? Where are you from and what go you here? Colon hello Michael, if language is a problem, 
I could help with at least one dot if this is of interest to you, drop me a line and let's talk dot you have nothing to lose, let erd. Michael, have you heard of a pop-up store? Do some research for companies and brands that are using it currently dot it might be an idea, seeing that you have a website, you could get people to come to a store that would only last a weekend. They culture the products and stuff like that, not even sell on site, no need for stock, just get them interested and then buy on your site. Dot could give them a coupon at the store, so that the purchase online is cheaper, up to you, but it's something that has been used successfully in the past. Dot to your research, on the front page of your website, ask your customers who would come if you were to do this sort of thing. Dot good luck. Hi David, strong reply after one plus year. Posted an update. Realize this is old, but a good read nevertheless and congrats. Are you still using my bidder or found a better one? I always thought about reselling on eBay some of the stuff from Craig's, but never the other way around. Early riser. Never too late, Michael. So you need help, or not? D. There are plenty of eBay snipers out there, most work fine, I guess. After a while though, I simplified the buying side and bought wholesale. Remember that reality is negotiable. So I wholesale prices. eBay and CL work in both ways. It's up to you to find price differences and remarket photos. Description. Send me a PM on where you're from and what you have in mind. Here's my summary of this thread. Or someone please correct me if I'm wrong. Step 1, buy X on eBay and resell on Craigslist, where X is an electronics item with a price point around $300, and profit per sale is about $60. Step 2, find a wholesaler for used maybe refurbished X, and start buying in large quantities to sell on Craigslist, also start selling multiples at a discount also in there somewhere is buying inexpensive add-ons via AlExpress to increase resale value. Let me know if this is right. I find it easier to buy on CL and then relist on CL in a different market or Amazon or eBay. I have much smaller CL market, however. eBay or Amazon you are exposed to the world, various income levels, different expectations of price points, etc. Exposure is just so different. Two ND part is basically what I gather as well, but haven't practiced. A lot easier buying one big bulk set of something that go hunt through goodwills, reply to ads, drive to inspect goods, so forth. Hey dude, just a thought, you should go e-commerce first. Most people don't look at e-commerce as a viable channel for local business, but this would allow you to keep your overhead low while consolidating a your business into a space for people to find you. You could start driving customers to your site. Even local PPC is cheaper, as are FB ads. I think local e-commerce business is a big opportunity, and perhaps the future for many businesses. Hi Michael, after reading, and Ryan's topic I found yours. I got inspired by your story and how you accomplished the extreme growth in a relatively short amount of time. After reading your story, I started immediately with 1000 cash. I bought four iPhones 4s for 80 and resold them for 135. I also bought and sold four iPads for a total of 250 profit. So I made 470 profit. All of the buying and selling was within one week. The second week I was even more determined, but only mad about 250 profit. I'm searching the whole day, lowballing everyone, but I can't seem to make more deals. I live in Holland or the Netherlands and the people here are different. Maybe you've heard the famous expression kijken, kijken niet kopen. Which means looking, looking, but not buying. Because the people here want a very high price selling and a very low price buying. So they have very frugal lifestyle apostrophe s. I was thinking that I could make it profitable if I could buy electronics wholesale, or in larger quantities. You made it work by buying wholesale, so I'm trying the same. Do you've got any tips on how I can arrange this? Here in Holland there aren't any wholesale companies like in the US. 
maybe you could create a bigger by making a website and selling your electronics online. Not nationwide, but whole Europe. Because nations are often too small here in EU. The business will be exclusive of your because like MJ said computer systems work 24 hours a day and don't complain about bad breath Joe. You only have to arrange a dropship model with your existing suppliers. Eventually you'll have a lot of views on your site and sales. And you can sell the site I read your post about trouble with languages. I think I can be of service. You also live in Europe right? I fluently speak Dutch, German, French almost fluently in English. So I can really help you with that, if you want. Thanks in advance and a lot of self-made luck, Aarons. I've heard that about the Dutch, yes. Being frugal is not a bad thing, depends on how you look at it. A frugal customer is more likely to buy from you than to buy a new dot which is what I've been doing for a while now. Read, nations as you say are pretty small. Thing is, Germany, the UK and France are already competitive and saturated. Their e-commerce markets are very mature. We've just opened a first local brick and mortar store which is doing really well, and have plans for more, but I'd like to sell to Scandinavia, the Baltics, Poland. Down the line. I'd rather be a big fish in small pond than a small fish in a big pond. Somehow it's easier to saturate a 5-10 M people market with your business, brand and products, than to gain traction in 70-80 M markets. For example, nearly every small convenience store, night shop, bakery in a 10 miles radius. We'll soon have a bunch of flyers of our business lying there for customers to take. If people think XXXXX, they got to know we exist and have to spontaneously think of ordering from us. Or Try doing that in the UK. 10 miles radius might be small in US terms, but in our densely populated country it's not dot cool name by the way, if it's your name. Or quote. Yes, you could look at it that way also. Every downside has its upside. I've read it. Congrats with your success so far. I'm sure that because of the fact that you look at it at a different way by helping 1,000 people like you do. You will reach your ultimate goal even faster. And that it will also be more fulfilling. Nations are almost too small. And like you said, it's very hard to compete in Germany, the UK, and France. Have you thought about selling in Holland as well? If so, I can help you with customer communication, translating your website, etc. You deliver a lot of value. So giving back is the least I can do. Maybe you could incorporate a FAQ on your site in different languages like Polish to reduce the amount of communication needed. Because your knowledge of the language is insufficient. That's very nice with the flyers. Because people also will get to know your company by offline marketing and not only online. I'm also working harder and making more deals. And I'm experiencing a limit of how much deals I can make in a day. Like MJ and a lot of other fast learners experience there. So I want to the process by buying wholesale. You said to not look too far for wholesalers. And said, I can't fully understand what you mean. Can you explain it further? Thanks. Yes it's my last name. It's a German name actually. Thanks in advance, Aarons, Aarons.